We're going to create a financial statement for Aladdin Travel Incorporated as of June, as of June. Now, just like we did in the previous chapter, the first financial statement is the income statement. And we're going to show the income statement starts with revenues, service revenue, and the amount of the balance is $7,500. That um, dollar amount comes from, let me go back one, two, two slides before, service revenue, the balance is $7,500. It's shown as a credit here which is correct, but on the financial statements, we don't report credits or debits, we just report the balance. So the balance is one, two, $7,500. That balance from the adjusted trial balance is carried over to the income statement. All the expenses that are listed on the adjusted trial balance are carried over. Let's go look, two slides back, 1,000, 1,800, 300, all of these, all of these expenses, these are all expenses, are now listed on the income statement, 1800, 1000, 543. All of those are listed there. We're gonna add up or sum up all the expenses and that turns out to be $4,000. What we're gonna come up with is income before taxes, 7,500 less the 4,000 gives us $3,500. Mind you, we should have noted that the expense stopped at $300. Let's go back to the trial balance. Yeah, we stopped here. Well, actually it was the order. We had all these, we did not show the $600 yet. What we are coming up with is before we can compute the income tax, we have to know what the income is before taxes. So we came up with $3,500. That's how we knew and that's how we computed out that, oh, I guess because of that $3,500, we now are gonna owe $600 in income tax expense. We booked that journal entry. That's also in the adjustments. There's the journal entry debit and a credit to income tax payable. There's that adjustment. We also have it on our notes from our previous, um, from our spreadsheet that we created. Income tax expense debit, 600. Income tax payable credit for 600. We booked it. Okay, so we're gonna take the $3,500 before taxes and subtract tax expense and we'll come up with net income of $2,900. Now we have the income state that's complete after using the adjusted trial balance. The next financial statement is the statement of retained earnings. This had to come from what we had in the system already. So retained earnings as of May 31st, 2018. Since our reporting period is for one month, then we want to start off what the ending balance was for the previous period, which was May 31st. That is going to be our beginning balance for this month, $18,800. That had to have been given. We didn't know that. We couldn't compute it, it had to be given. I guess we can go look at the adjusted trial balance or the trial balance and see what it was. Yeah, here we go, retained earnings, 18,800. That's what was listed there. So we took that dollar amount and we are showing it on our retained earnings, May 31st, 2018. That's saying that that's our beginning retained earnings, 18,800. We added net income, that came from the income statement, $2,900. $2,900. We have a subtotal and then we subtract the dividends declared. That's $3,200. That came from dividends that's shown on the adjusted trial balance that was paid previously. We didn't book any entries here. We, it was just done before we even came up. So $3,200 was entered. So we're going to take our subtotal of $21,700 and subtract from that the dividends declared of $3,200. Leave, leaving us retained earnings balance as of June 30th, 2018 of $18,500. From there, we're gonna generate the balance sheet. The balance sheet is gonna be listing of all assets, liabilities, and equities. It's a snapshot. We're gonna list assets, cash, accounts receivable, supplies, prepaid land equipment. Now, just so that you know, if you haven't already seen or have already figured this out, when we list assets, 
we list it in the order of liquidity. When we talk about liquid or liquidity, we're talking about cash. Cash is always the most liquid asset we have, so that's always going to be listed at the very top. Cash, accounts receivable is pretty liquid. It's almost money coming in. It's not yet here, but it's almost in, so we, we list that secondly. Supplies next, prepaid rent, land equipment, those are the least liquid because those are not likely going to be sold or liquefied in the, in the short term. So we show those on the bottom of asset list. Notice that land is shown here and then equipment is at its cost less the corresponding accumulated depreciation, which gives us the adjusted balance of equipment of 23,600. We total up our assets, 83,300. Liabilities. Those are going to be listed in the order of maturity. Whatever's due first will be listed at the top of liabilities. Accounts payable will almost always be listed first. And then from there, it will vary from company to company, but you'll get a feel for what the normal order is by just list looking at enough balance sheets. So next is salaries payable, unearned service revenue, income tax payable, all these dollar amounts, all of these dollar amounts are coming from the adjusted trial balance. I'll just, unearned service revenue, same 200. Let's go back to the, the uh, adjusted trial balance. Unearned service revenue, $200. So all these dollar amounts are what's carrying over to the balance sheet. That's where all these dollar amounts came from. Common stock came over from the uh, adjusted trial balance. Retained earnings, however, came from the statement of retained earnings. The statement of retained earnings as of June 30th, 2018 is shown on the statement of retained earnings as 18,500. That carries over to the stockholders equity section on the balance sheet, 18,500. So that when we add up common stock and retained earnings, our total stockholders equity is 68,500. Then we add that to our total liabilities and we get a total liabilities and stockholders equity of 83,300. Lo and behold, liabilities and stockholders equity equal total assets. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to our accounting cycle. After we produce the financial statements, we then go to the next step and that is closing entries. So let's learn about closing entries now. 